Hey everyone, today is the day. I'm very excited to finally announce and debut Patch App version 3.0. It comes with a whole list of new features and I'm gonna walk you through each one and show you what we've added to the app. Let's dive into it. With every new upgrade to the Patch App software, we always try to update the overall appearance of the main app. You can see here, Patch App version 3.0 has a much cleaner, sharper looking aesthetic. A brand new looking appearance from brand new path arrows to new malt arrows to new icons, menus, all the way across the entire application. In the active routing grid, you can see it got an update for the path arrows and the malt arrows. They no longer have the letter P for paths or letter M for malts, but it behaves exactly the same. So if I'm setting up a routing, you can see it will still illuminate the arrows to signify that this connection is made and that a path is being created. Just like the malt before, I can simply click any of the arrows next to whatever I want to malt off of, and I can drag and drop and continue building off my malted signal flow. Simply dragging and dropping to increase rows or digital rack spaces. You'll notice at the bottom of each column here, there is no longer an add or subtract additional slots or rows. Now all you have to do is simply drag and drop any digital rack space into the last slot, and it'll populate additional slots. Once you clear all, it will return back to the default view. One of my favorite features added to Patch App 3.0, the Quick Strip. Let me show you how this works. Now I'm gonna show you how to set up and use the new Quick Strip feature. I can enter the setup menu by either right clicking on any of the three buttons here and clicking edit, which will launch the Quick Strip selection menu, or I can go through settings and Quick Strip setup. Once I'm in this menu, you can see here I have three different drop-down options. Each one of these represents each button here at the top. By clicking the drop-down, I can select any of my stored routings here to have them quickly recall with the quick strip. This is just simply a copy or duplicate of our stored routings menu here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and set up three different routings for quick recall. I'll choose this one, this one, and this one. Once I save, you'll see it'll populate those names up here in the Quick Strip menu. Now, by just simply clicking once on any one of these buttons, I can recall that routing. This is incredibly efficient for A and Bing different routings or having my favorite preferred routings accessible to me at the top of the app without having to go into the stored routings menu. Now you can mute or bypass the entire active routing grid by using the mute all feature. A fairly simple and straightforward feature that we added into Patch App version 3.0 is the ability to mute the entire grid. In previous versions, you would have had to mute or bypass each individual path. Now you can mute the entire active routing grid by going to the toggle section here at the bottom of the app and clicking mute all. Of course, we added key commands to this as well. If you're on OS X, command M. If you're on Windows, control M. Highly requested and it's finally here in 3.0, the option to rename and customize path names. This is one of the most highly requested feature additions for the next patch app update, the ability to rename paths. So now I have an active routing set up, but I wanna name it so when I recall this later, I know what was in each individual path. I can do this by right clicking on the path number, clicking edit, and I can choose my own labeling. I'll label this one, acoustic guitar. Then I can go ahead and save it. I'll call it routing four. And when I clear all, you'll notice it'll go back to default state of path one, two, three, four, and so on and so forth. But when I recall that routing, it's going to store those labels right in the stored routing. This is great for keeping more organized during your sessions. It was time to give a boost to the patch apps performance. You might have noticed as I was showing the new quick strip feature that the recalls and routings populated so much faster than previous versions of the app. That's because we increased the performance of recalls by 50%. You can see here that the recalls are almost instantaneous when you click on the button. Like all the menus across Patch App 3.0, we made the stored routings menu even more powerful with more customization. To go along with the new appearance and aesthetic of 3.0, each notification prompt and menu got an updated look as well, including the stored routings menu. You can see here, it now populates in the center of the app rather than under this area here like the previous versions. We also added in a search bar feature 
and a new thing called edit mode in the stored routings. So by clicking edit, it now opens up a different selection that I can now choose which one of these routings I want to make my default launch routing. In previous versions, you would have to right click on the routing to make that selection. We also have a reorder icon. So you can now reorder your stored routings depending on your personal preference. This is great for keeping your favorite routings near the top of your stored routings menu. A familiar but newly updated multi-unit setup menu that allows you to configure upwards to 10 patch systems of any model of any configuration. The multi-unit setup menu got a little bit of an update. You can see here it's the same basic layout as the previous versions, but you can now configure upwards to 10 different patch series hardware models together for a multi-unit setup. In the input output passes, we added an option in called independent. Independent allows you to independently control multiple hardware units from one instance of the patch app. This means that you can now dedicate one hardware unit for mixing and then another hardware unit for mastering or tracking and control them independently without having to have any analog sends and receives between the units. We also refined the multi-unit setup reorder function. So for instance, if you're setting up multiple patch series models or you're testing out what it would be like to add another patch series model to your setup, you can now rearrange them by simply hovering over whatever model you have selected and simply dragging and dropping it over top of the model you want to rearrange it for. A new addition, the hardware details menu. This allows you to quickly reference your serial number, your model, your firmware, and everything right from the patch app. We made it even easier and much more simple than ever before to check in on the status of what Flock Audio hardware is communicating with your patch app software. You can access this by going into settings, about patch, and hardware details. Here you can see that I have a patch model, my serial number, the firmware I'm running, and the status of that hardware. You can go here to review which Flock Audio hardware is connected and communicating with your patch app software. Patch app 3.0's hardware setup menu now includes and saves and stores all multi-unit setup routings directly in the hardware file. The hardware setup menu got a little bit of an update, but you can see here it's the same basic layout. We just changed some of the graphics here, but they behave exactly the same as previous versions of the app. We did add in a search bar feature and the ability to go to the user preferences menu right from the hardware setup menu. We also moved the import and export selections from the top menu bar here to the bottom. You might be wondering with these changes to the hardware setup menu, what happened to the master 48 volt bypass selection and the digital rack space number selection that was located at the bottom of the hardware setup menu in previous versions. We decided to relocate those to the user preferences and customize tab. Like every update for the patch app software, new customization options built in to user preferences. Moving on to the user preferences menu, you can see here we have all the same selections and options as the previous version 2.1. In the customize tab, we've added a few additional options and customization and relocated, as I mentioned, the master 48 volt phantom power and hardware channel numbers or digital rack space numbers as it was labeled in version 2.1 of patch app from the hardware setup menu into the customize tab. We also added all menu and button animation so you can disable this. So if you've noticed during this walkthrough, you see the different various menus will fade in and out when you go into them. It's a nice touch, but sometimes users don't wanna have that. So you can simply disable it by going to user preferences, customize, and selecting all menu and button animations. This will disable them. At the bottom here, we have restore all prompt notifications. If you notice while you've been setting up routings, different notification prompts will pop up. For instance, if I clear all paths, I get this prompt. I can select to never see this prompt again by clicking do not show again. However, if I do that, it will never return. But what I can do to bring that back is go to settings, user preferences, customize tab, and select restore all prompt notifications. It'll alert me what it's going to do, and I can click Proceed. The addition of compatibility with Patch XT. Patch XT has some additional new features built into the hardware that you can utilize by using Patch App 3.0. Now I'm going to briefly touch on how Patch App version 3.0 works with the Patch XT hardware. For this example, I'm going to set up a multi unit setup that involves a Patch XT. You'll now notice in the lower toggle section of the app, 
it populated a patch XT button. The main purpose of this button is to control the sleep-wake functionality of the patch XT hardware. Patch XT hardware has the ability to have either a sleep or wake mode instead of having to be fully powered down like the patch LT or patch system. You can access the sleep wake functionality by right clicking on the patch XT button and choosing sleep wake settings. This will launch the user preferences menu and at the bottom here you'll see sleep wake function. By clicking the drop down menu you'll see that by default the patch XT hardware will put itself to sleep after inactivity for 8 hours. This means no software communication between the patch app software and the hardware or no audio signals are being detected within 8 hours. Of course, you can choose any one of these options, including never auto sleep. You'll also notice when you right click on the Patch XT button, an audio detection option. The Patch XT hardware is equipped with an audio detection feature. This is very useful when you're first setting up your Patch XT and you want to confirm that you are receiving incoming signals to it. To use this feature, just simply select the device based on serial number of your XT and then any eight channels you want to check and confirm that you are receiving an audio incoming signal. For instance, by selecting one through eight, and if I'm sending a signal into my XT on channel one, and I want to confirm I'm receiving that signal, I'll see a blue illumination that looks something like this. This detection menu basically works like a simplified version of a VU meter. And there you have it. That's just barely scratching the surface of what Patch App 3.0 can do for you. We really hope you love these new features, and as always, happy patching from all of us at Flock Audio.